So, uh, first off, how do you feel about Impact Wrestling moving to Access TV? Uh, bigger, better, and better. Right on, man. It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to shoot us right up there. Um, I finally feel like I'm in the right place at the right time with, with uh, the right players. And uh, it's a good time to be a wrestler, a good time for Johnny Swinger. Uh, to be back in the, I just came back in last month, so uh, second time around uh, with the original TNA and now evolved into Impact. Um, pretty exciting times ahead, and uh, just uh, grateful to be part of it. Yeah, uh, what was the process of you coming back to Impact? How, how did that go when you getting signed? Coming well, back? I, I, as a lot of people might not know, on a national level, I've been wrestling all these years uh, independent wise in the Southeast. A lot of it's off the grid, off the radar, not covered by uh, too much press. So um, I've always kept in shape, always. Um, Always try to evolve my 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 work in the ring, you know, to, to stay with the times, but still keeping those old fundamentals. And uh, as far as coming back to Impact, I got a really long history with Scott Demore, our executive vice president. He was uh, we go back about 25 years. He was the man behind my original break in wrestling with WCW. He was also behind me with uh, TNA. So he's always been a big Johnny Swinger proponent. Um, I always said uh, Scott knew how to use Johnny Swinger better than anybody. Um, other than him, there's only one other person uh, that I've ever seen do this, Paul Heyman, be the other one I even credit, will actually get in my face and do a Johnny Swinger promo with the facial expressions, the voice, and everything. And that's how I know I'm in good hands. So you know how to know what to do with me. So um, I mean, you kind of answered this question already, but what are the advantages of working with Impact as opposed to other promotions? Is it Scott? Um, mainly, and, and it's not just Scott. Also, uh, Don Callis is also. Uh, I go all the way back to day one with him. He was the, the booker in Winnipeg, Canada for my very first match ever. So uh, he, he was always a big fan of my talent uh, throughout the years. And then we worked together as talents in, in uh, the original ECW and with TNA as well. So we go back all the way. So he's always been a, a big backer of mine. Uh, Tommy Dreamer's involved in, uh, in, in some of the creative process. And, and he was my boss and friend in ECW. So I just finally got it. Got a, you stick around long enough. You, <laughs> you know, you get better. You, you got good friends and people move up and get in positions and I just, all the stars have aligned for me so to speak so as, as you kind of mentioned you've worked with just about every company over the last 20 some odd years right. what uh, what about right now in wrestling sticks out to you does it remind you of like the attitude era when when things were really cooking or it does it, it does like? it's uh, I think it's come it's coming up slower than it did back then but I also think there's more there's even more options out there than there were so I think everyone's gonna really have to step it up and work hard to make their show uh, I think we'll always have the base fans that are going to follow everything but we want to hook back the big mainstream crowd and just increase the whole thing right and uh, I think that once they, once they see our show with the new exposure on access can be available to more people I can't imagine anybody with, with some kind of wrestling interest would watch our show and oh, I don't want to watch that anymore I think we're going to be able to we can get someone to sample it I think we're going to hook them uh, who, who in Impact do you most look forward to working with? Um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with everybody. When I started the Las Vegas TV tapings, I made a point to actually go out kind of by the curtain to watch and get a feel for who the crowd was, was interested in. And pretty much everybody had a, a good reaction to the crowd. I'm really impressed with OVE. Uh, they, they've really risen to the top. I love the gang mentality. I mean, you, you know, danger in numbers, you know what I mean? So, and, and not even to be like, say, I'm a bad guy or a good guy, just... I'd love to work with those guys. Uh, Brian Cage is unbelievable. I mean, just to, just to look like that and the unbelievable stuff he can do. And uh, we would love to get in the ring with him and see how that played out. And uh, I tell you who I don't want any part of is Tessa Blanchard. Uh, she looks, and I heard, hits like a ton of bricks. And uh, <laughs> she's pretty badass. So I don't want any of that. But uh, pretty much everybody's got a, a really good uh, standout uh, look about them and the way they present themselves. So. I think I can, with the way they got me coming in, I can pretty much step in there with anybody and have a pretty entertaining segment.
Now, uh, you mentioned ECW a couple times. How does Impact compare to ECW? Very similar, actually. Uh, that thing I just said about Paul Heyman and Scott, they're, they're very similar in the sense that he knows me, he knows the roster, and he knows how to how to plug him into certain places like Paul E. did. And the other thing is that Paul took a lot of advice from the wrestlers. And I see that Scott and Don and these guys, they're, they're kind of doing the same thing, you know. It's not a one man can't oversee everything. You've got to get input from, especially from the people that are doing it. Uh, most wrestlers know their character and how to portray it, and they're going to be driving down the road to the gym or something. And an idea is going to pop in their head. It would be really good if I did this. And then you can tell them, and they'll use it. Uh, some places you can't do that. You can't get away with that. You know, they got a certain way they want it done, and you better follow it or else you're going to be gone, you know. But that's what uh, Impact reminds me a lot of ECW, that sense that everybody really is working together. They want to see not just their thing go good, they want all the segments. Because we want people to watch a show, not just, well, I'm going to turn it on to see Swinger and then I'm going to turn it off. You know, we want to watch the whole show. So everybody's kind of watching each other's stuff and everyone's got an idea. Like, hey, man, Swinger would be funny if you said this. I've had so many people give me lines to throw in a promo and I use it and it gets a good, good response, you know. So it's, it's kind of cool. Everybody's in on the on the, on the creative part of the, of the overall show. It's cool. So what can Impact fans expect from Johnny Swinger? Um, kind of a new lease on life. Uh, just uh, taking all the 25 years a long time. I've seen a lot of, uh, and like I said, the, lot, the last 15 years or so, I've been getting in the ring with Bullet Bob Armstrong and Tommy Rich and the Rock and Roll Express and all these guys that people remember from 30 years ago. I've been, I'm getting in the ring with these guys, so I picked up some stuff from them that I'm going to start putting on TV that people haven't seen in a long time. And, you know, the older uh, fans are going, oh, I remember, <laughs> I remember that move. I remember those moves. And the young, younger people are like, well, I've never seen that before, so I'm going to get them both. Like, it's just going to kind of hook them a little bit and just try to make my matches look different and, uh, you know, just draw the people in with whatever's going on before me I want to be different have something that, and then keep it going and the next match you're going to do the same thing you know is just keep the people what was your favorite match the, the one that stood out to you like maybe what, best fan reaction in, in, in any company I, I gotta say WCW in the late 90s was just off the hook you know with uh, I think a couple of the matches I had with Goldberg, where he when he was the biggest thing going in wrestling. Just because when I when I was a kid and I wanted to be a wrestler, that's what you dreamed about was that. Even if it wasn't, you, you seen yourself in the ring, and then the guy come out to wrestle, just gets this thunderous reaction that shakes the place, and that's what it was like with Billy. And uh, even DDP got real hot there for a while, and, and I wrestled him when he was the world's champion, and I was like, that was my favorite matches were when the was the most reaction with huge crowds. You know, there's nothing like it getting it, feeling 15,000 people rumbling a place. You know what I mean? And you have something to do with it. So yeah, big matches. WCW TV match with Goldberg and uh, DDP and then uh, actually having some matches with some guys that I watched a kid like Greg Hammer with Valentine and guys like that you know, and, you know and TV and wrestling the guys that I was, had on my wall as a kid you know, it was uh, pretty cool you know those are the ones that stand out the most. There was a point on the 